morning everyone is that not a cozy scene do they not look like the most comfortable things in the whole wide world look how cozy they look wrapped up by the fire <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to my home. <clears throat> For those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness, my name is Tammy Treyer. I am an author, a writer, and a radio show host at Mountain Woman Radio. And my family and I educate and share on our lifestyle here in northern Idaho, living off the grid. And you can find us at treyerwilderness.com. Good morning, Miss Shelley. How are you guys doing up there? Is it still raining? We've got nothing but rain and mush now on top of our 36 inches of snow. And Miss Shelley lives on an island and got a foot of snow, which is very non-typical for her area. So I imagine you are pretty sloppy up there too. <laughs> so how is everybody today? It is a dreary day here today. It's a little chilly and damp and... Uh, if you saw in my earlier sh display there, my dogs are cozied up by the fire. It's a good, comfortable scene here today. I would love to join you on the couch in front of the fire. That would be just so awesome. I could use that today. I am like out of sorts today. This cold just won't go away, and it's just like whipping me in the butt. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Oh, how I would love you guys sitting on my couch with me today. That would just be awesome. I was actually sitting on the couch doing devotions a little bit ago, and a tree fell outside. I didn't. I looked out. I went out. I didn't see it anywhere. So it was it was close by, but uh, thankfully not close to the house. Good morning, Miss Diana. She says we are wet here. Also, more rain expected tomorrow. Yeah, we have rain for like the next nine days. Good morning, Miss Millie. You are actually on my list of things to share today, girl. Miss Millie Copper is joining us, and her series, or book number four to her series, Havoc in Wyoming, was released yesterday. So you can check that out by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper. And that is in the description below. And I'm just so glad to have you guys joining me. Sorry I couldn't make it yesterday. We had some unexpected events occur and it just was would have been an absolute chaos trying to do a live in the midst of things. So I opted for today and I'm glad I did because I could use you guys to do some renewing for me as well. I'm just like whoop. We've had this cold since like right before Christmas and it just won't go away and I'm just it's almost gone. I'm just dealing with like sinus pressure and headaches. So I have got my immune boosting tea mixed with herbal coffee and it is absolutely awesome because the immune boosting tea is a cinnamon type tea. It is uh, cinnamon sticks, um, astragalus root and licorice root. I will share the link later down below. Um, but it is a fabulous tea and then mixed with your herbal coffee You got that nice cinnamony mix and nice creamy milk in there and my stevia is just perfect So Mill says drink some oregano honey tea sister. Yeah. Oh girl. We've been drinking everything We've been doing elderberry stuff. This is just a weird weird. I, I haven't been sick in a long time with a cold and we and 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 it just I don't know it's just a weird one it's just lingering and it's very thick um, Diana says hi Millie I'm looking forward to reading this series awesome yes you will not be disappointed Miss Diana and Diana has some celebrations today my fingers aren't working again um, we've been praying for Diana to find um, some work in her area and um, she was blessed with a job this week, so she will be starting next week, if I'm correct. I believe I'm correct. Um, let me see here. Hang on one second. Turn the volume down. Okay, there we go. I'm trying to get my comments to display on here. There we go. Technology is gonna fight me all the way today. I can see it <laughs> That's all right. We're, st we're still gonna have a good old time 
So Miss Shelley says, if I can get the whole thing to open, it is raining cats and dogs with flooding on the road. Hit a huge puddle on my way to work. Guess from what I am hearing, it's probably ongoing, right? Okay, that's fighting with me. I'm trying to see if it'll show up in my comments over here. Um, it is not wanting to show. But I imagine you've got the same mess we've got. So we all have to just hunker in and sort of suck it up. I imagine you guys um, struggle with the same things I do this time of year. When it gets gray and dreary, um, I tend to struggle with that because I am as solar powered as my house. So when, um, <clears throat> when it gets like this, I, I need sunshine. And even when it's, you know, dreary but it's not raining, I can get out and walk and kind of renew myself and um, get around. But it is just quite miserable. And the dogs have been cooped up and they're just getting... I had them out yesterday when I was bringing in firewood and they were just nuts. So they feel the same way I do. So what are some of your struggles this time of year? What are the things that give you a hard time? Um, and... and Typically, it's the start of a new year. Uh, what are some of the things you're focusing on, as well as what are some of the things that you struggle with? Today, I have some really, I think, empowering uh, materials um, that we can all utilize right now. Um, with it being as gray as it is, you know, we need to find things to keep ourselves busy. One of the things I enjoy doing is preparing for my garden. Now that is not an option this year as far as me planting because this is our last winter here and um, if we are planting it won't be on this property. But I do enjoy getting my the seed catalogs out and looking at things and uh, lining up my garden and deciding how I want to plant things. And I think that's an important thing for us to consider for those of us that are wanting to feed our families is to take this time of year and like delve into our happy places. And that's one of my happy places. Another happy place for me is getting involved in my art and my creativity. So later today I will be doing a lot of recording and I will also be doing a lot of writing um, these next nine days. I've, I've kind of got my calendar book solid with recording and writing. Um, I figured that would give me a good break from one another. Also editing videos. So um, diving into the things that we really enjoy doing when um, life isn't optimal is a really great way to keep our joy. Diana says, I need to step away for a few to help Craig with something. Be right back. Perfect. So... Um, it's, it's important that we have things that give us joy. And oftentimes in life, we get so wrapped up in life, sometimes in our kids and keeping our kids going, good morning, Miss Mona, um, that um, we lose sight of our own joys. And it's important that we, um, aha, all of a sudden my finger is working. There we go. Aha. Okay. Um, it's important that we know what gives us joy and find ourselves again. And I think that's an important step um, for all of us is to be sure that we know what gives us joy and, and also to find ourselves. Because often in life, like I said, we tend to get lost in the shuffle, in raising our children, um, and that's not a bad thing. Um, we go through different seasons of life and it's all what we make of those seasons. Sometimes we need to make sacrifices, sometimes we need to make adjustments, but when we can incorporate some of our joys into our chaos, and you guys have been watching us, this is year and following us, this is year four of our journey in a very financial quandary. and and. Um, we all have choices 
I could be sitting on here and whining and crying every week about all the crazy stuff that goes on, but crazy stuff goes on all the time. And it's not just for me. You guys have crazy stuff too. You know, none of us are singled out. So we need to focus on keeping joy in our lives and finding our purpose and seeing the most potential in ourselves. And I will share on that a little bit. I wanted to go back here. Um, I was able to see what Shelly wrote. Um, she said, guess from what I am hearing from Facebook is that it's a foot deep causing some problems on the road. Wow. Yeah, when you have no, when you're, you're not used to and your system's there as far as your county and, and, and the city and they're not used to getting rid of all that water and all of that snow and not dealing with all of that normally, you're going to end up with flooding in all kinds of situations. That's just crazy. Be safe out there. Shelly says, I am having fun with the cold also. My nose is full, lots and lots and coughing and generally just tired of it all. Oregano oil and now golden seal plus lots of other stuff to get healthy. I know I feel like I've been like tapping into every possible herb I have. We've been, we've been doing different teas. We've been doing different tinctures. We've been doing everything that normally works and it's just not kicking it. It's just crazy. So kind of got to let it work its system and then... With my immune system being impaired, that just adds to it because I ended up with pink eye and I ended up with uh, all kinds of other issues. My lymphatic system is clogging. So yeah, it's just like this convoluted mess and I know Shelly understands and Diana was sick for a while. So it's just that season. But having on hand the things we need to get ourselves well is really important. And also just resting in the place that we are. Sometimes we just need to rest. And that's what I did over the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, we just crashed. And we both needed it because we've both been sick. And it was just really, it was nice. And it, it you know, gave us renewal. So sometimes we just need to rest in that. Um, Tammy says, I struggle to want to get going with the day when it is dark. <laughs> yes, I know. I also want to be outside moving and doing, but it is cold. I am planning for the garden and tasks to be accomplished. Awesome. Yeah, I, I totally hear you. I When it is sunny, Monday we did firewood and it was just a beautiful day outside. It, it rained later in the day, but when we were doing our firewood, it was just beautiful. And I opted to just walk away from everything and go out and help him with the firewood so we could get things done faster. And I'm so I was so glad I did. It was just being outside, doing physical work, physical labor, is truly very good for our bodies you know we our deepest desire is to be in the middle of Alaska somewhere living this lifestyle just in that environment and really just experiencing that at some point in our lives and um, you know we've been really reflecting on our lives here and what we've created and the tranquility and the beauty in this place and you know, God has blessed us so greatly here, and we live a very different life. Although I'm connected to the internet, and although I have power, my power comes from the sun, which is limited, so that's why I only have one light on. <laughs> but being able to seek out what we want in life is one of the greatest ways to give ourselves joy. And I am just so grateful that we are the kind of people we are and that we just embrace this head on. God opened all the doors for us to be here. And this has just been such an amazing adventure. And I'm just so grateful every day for what we've created here and what I've, how I was able to raise Austin and, and just the life we live. It's just, you know, it's romanticized by a lot of people. Um, I think it is romantic, but there's a lot of work involved in our lifestyle. I mean, there's never a day that we just sit unless we are forced to, and we are always doing something. And that's what keeps us going in life. That's what keeps our bodies going. That's what keeps our health. That's what keeps us fit. And, you know, seeking those things in our lives that we really desire and that we really want and that give us joy are what make our day-to-days special. And 
I want to just encourage you guys to seek those things in your life because life is short. We chose this lifestyle because we did not want to be, um, let's see, what's the word I want to use? Um, we didn't want to follow suit to the world. We wanted to do something different. We wanted, you know, we were watching people that were hitting retirement age who had worked their entire lives, had all these really neat dreams, but were waiting till they retired to enjoy them. And when they hit retirement age, their health wasn't what it needed to be to enjoy their dreams or they didn't have enough money to enjoy their dreams. And we wanted to make sure that our dreams were met by maybe, you know, um, living with less to achieve more, if that makes sense. So, you know, we had a lot of people scratching their heads and wondering why we would want to live the way we are, to embrace what we have. And, um, you know, you've got to look at life sometimes by what is most important, and that is you, you and your family. And regardless what other people think of your dreams and your desires, you need to embrace them because if they're ingrained in you and they're part of you and they're something that you hold really near and dear, you know, we are the ones that have the abilities to make those things happen. And we need to not worry about what the rest of the world is doing because nobody said we had to all be cookie cutters and that we all had to live in the same type of house and that we all had to go to the same type of job and that we all had to drive the same kind of car. You know, we are given the opportunities to expand on our lives and to make our lives what we want them to be. However, we always, there's so many people that worry about what the other people think and what, what, you know, when people have something to say, you take it to heart so greatly that it turns you around from your dream and keeps you from your dream. And that's where we've got to learn to focus on our joys and our happiness and our lives and our peace and, and stay steadfast in those notions. Because I'm telling you guys, when you walk out your dreams and you live out your dreams, and like I said earlier, we all have hardships. We all walk through hardships. My four-year journey here is no different than many others, and many others have even harder walks than I do. You know, so we, you know, we can't exclude um, embracing our dreams because we're afraid it might be hard. Because life is hard. How many of you will agree? Life is hard. The day-to-day -day can be very difficult. We walk through challenges that are that can take us to our knees. But regardless what you would be doing in life, you're gonna have challenges and you're gonna be brought to your knees. These are the things that make us who we are. These are the things that build on us and uh, you know, build endurance. The thing is, wouldn't you much rather be walking out a hard struggle doing what you choose and what you would love to do most in life? So that being said, I want to encourage you guys to really truly think about what gives you joy in life. And if there are dreams that you have wanted to achieve and you keep pushing them off because of fear of what other people might say or the fear of the unknown or just stepping out of your comfort zone, please challenge yourself. Please challenge yourself today because if I would not have walked these last four years out, my life would be so very different. This was part of my journey. These hardships, these struggles, these joys, these celebrations, they're all what makes us who we are. And they're part of our story. And think of the stories you can share when you step out into adventurous parts of your life and you step out of your comfort zone and you achieve things you never thought you could achieve. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Now, Oh, good morning, Terry. Good morning, my dear friend. I'm watching from the car on my way home. Awesome. I'm glad you could join me. Morning, beautiful. Right back at you, Mona. And Miss Shelley says, I didn't realize you guys were commenting. This is awesome. It wasn't popping. But it is now. Oh, 
There we go. Shelly says, I'm trying to get some more of our renovations planned and done. I am tired of having some done, but areas not done, so the done areas still look messy. I know. Hey, I hear that. But it will come, and that's awesome. So you're focused, and you are, are planning, which is good. Goals and planning are extremely important. Um, Diana says, back now, this cold, wet, gray weather just makes me want to veg or sleep. <laughs> I know that. Or curl up on the couch by the fire, right? I know. I hear that. Tammy said hi to John, so I can't see him joining, but hi, John. I am glad you are here. Millie says, yes, living with less to achieve more. Love it. Absolutely. You know, you, I know you are embracing that same thing, Millie, and, you know, What's really funny is until people embrace such a thing, they don't get it. And that is why we, you know, my family and I are so misunderstood in a lot of ways, um, even by people close to us, because they haven't experienced it. Once you experience certain things in life, um, you just look at the world so differently and and you live life so differently and you know living simply um, it's hard to even put into words because there are times when I see the the, the world um, seeking um, feelings out of events and material things and I get those just waking up every morning like I don't have to seek those types of adventures because of how I'm living if that makes any sense Mona says oh boy do I have stories even with this turtle brace on <laughs> we all have stories and that's the beautiful thing and we need to create those stories you know we aren't meant to all follow suit we aren't all meant to be doing the exact same thing God created us with a purpose to do different things and sadly our society all thinks we have to do the same thing and when we are bold enough to step out of that mold and create and do our own thing that is when you find your peace and your joy, your happiness, your purpose. Um, you know, I can't encourage it more. I, I just can't. Good morning, Ken. I want to share something with you. This right here, I think will sum up what I'm saying. I think this is just amazing. Okay, so... The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. That is in Judges 6, 12. And this is the stories told of a man who put an eagle's egg into the nest of a barnyard chicken. And the eaglet hatched and grew up with the brood of chickens. All his life he did what the chickens did. Scratched in the dirt for the seeds and insects, clucked and cackled, and never flew more than a few feet off the ground. Then, one day, he saw a magnificent bird soaring gracefully above him and asked, What is that beautiful creature? What is it called? The chicken next to him said, That's an eagle, the king of all birds. But don't give him any mind, because you could never be like him. So the eagle returned to the pecking in the dirt and died thinking it was a barnyard chicken. Who told you that you don't have potential? Who told you that you won't succeed in life or make an impact? Certainly not God. When the angel of the Lord called Gideon to deliver Israel from the Midianites, he responded with a litany of excuses about why he wasn't qualified for the job. But the angel told him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel. Have not I sent you? Notice two important things in this story. First, God spoke to the destiny within Gideon, not to his present circumstances. 
Second, God reminded him that it was not the power of the one being sent, but the one sending him that would win the battle. Today you are mighty because God is with you. Are you an eagle or a chicken? I am an eagle. I just think that is such a cool story. And that is the thing, you know, that sums up my story of being in a mold, in a society that is molding us and wanting us to all follow suit. But look what happens. There's two different things that happen there. Look at the chicken who said, oh, you could never be that. Because we're, it's put in our minds that we can't or shouldn't do different things and that it's not possible. Uh, you know, if, if our inventors of the past wouldn't have had the courage to keep going, we wouldn't have lights. We wouldn't have power. We wouldn't have a lot of things. Each of us has different things instilled in us, desires and... Um, I think it's important that we realize that that burning inside of us to achieve things is not a mistake. You know, good things are from, from God, and God will continue to nudge us. That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit in us reminding us that we have purpose and potential. Now, there is the other side of that coin where, you know, we have the ability to use our potential, but we could sit in that barnyard and listen to the other chicken telling us that we'll never be that, or we can choose to soar. And guys, I will always choose to soar. I will always choose to soar instead of being stuck. And you know, I, I truly believe it is important for our growth, our well-being, and our happiness that we know what gives us joy. Thank you, Ken. Ken says, good story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, I thought that really, really described sometimes many of us because we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone. We're afraid to do sometimes what God encourages us to do. You know, there have been many situations in our circumstances here where God has prompted us in our lowest places to serve others. And sadly, you know, there are, there are Christian people who don't see that God would ever ask that of us. But why wouldn't he ask us in our lowest places to seek our joy? When we serve others, we find joy. And when we serve others, we are doing God's will because we are showing and setting examples of when we are in a place where we should be maybe rocking in a corner, but we're seeking something more. Um, There's just so many things we can do in our lives to make our lives better. And I want to just see you guys being courageous and strong enough and mighty enough because God makes us that way to step out and do the things that serve you and your family. Don't be part of the mold. Good morning, Miss Holly. Here's another thing that kind of goes along with that. The joy of the Lord is your strength. This is Nehemiah 8.10. When you listen to a great choir sing the Hallelujah Chorus, you realize that Handel was inspired by God. He wrote the entire Messiah in, in three weeks. He said the music literally came to him in a flurry of notes and motives. He wrote feverishly as if driven by an unseen composer to put pen to paper. Yet he wrote it when his eyesight was failing and he was facing the threat of dying in a debtor's prison because of a mountain of outstanding bills. Most of us find it difficult to create under stress, especially when physical or financial problems are at the root of that stress. And yet Handel did. How? He credits the completion of his masterpiece to one thing, joy. 
He is quoted as saying that he felt as if he would burst with joy at what he was hearing in his mind and in his heart. Instead of dying as he thought he would, he lived to see his oratorio become a cherished tradition and a popular work. And he also saw it succeed in raising vast sums of money for the poor and the destitute. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength, and the one and one of the first things Satan will attack is your joy. He knows it's the spiritual and emotional fuel that you run on. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Note the words remain in you, so no matter what happens this year, keep your joy. I think this is a great thing to remember. You know, so much of what I'm hearing in this is that the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you are constantly being prompted internally and it's your heart's desire to do something and it's because you are feeling joy, all the more reason for us to embrace that. That is, that is our fuel and that is our strength. And if we deny it, we're obviously denying that renewal of our fuel and our strength. The other thing is that that's the first thing that Satan will attack. So when we feel like our joy is zapped and gone, you can be sure that he's playing a role in it. And we need to, we need to seek what gives us joy. I just think I just think this is awesome and I can relate to this in a lot of ways with my writing and different things that I do that you know I've been I've been journaling at times and doing my devotions <clears throat> and all of a sudden I feel so prompted to just write a whole bunch of things down and this has happened several times one was basically the whole outline of an article the other time um, you know God gives the mountain man and I ideas on things we can do here, things we can do in our future, all kinds of things. And the one day, um, it was really unbelievable because God just started dumping um, all kinds of crazy ideas into my head. Things that on a normal basis, they were like very mechanically inclined. I am mechanically inclined, but I have a line. Mountain Man has no boundaries. He is extremely mechanically inclined and just it's amazing watching how his brain works. But I, I said God gave me my Einstein moment because I came down here and explained plumbing aspects of things and different things uh, to setting up um, some outdoor structures here on the homestead and he just looked at me with his mouth hanging open knowing darn right well I don't know plumbing that well I know plumbing to a degree but not to that degree and it was pretty crazy and there was also electrical things involved it was pretty wild and you know those moments I just get giddy about because I just absolutely love when God gifts us with those moments and Oftentimes our lives are so busy that God's gifting and we're missing the gifts. We're missing that still small voice. We're missing that prompting to seek our joy. Um, oops, sorry about that. And I want to encourage you guys that because that is where growth comes from in our lives. When we are willing to step out of our comfort zone, there is great growth found there because we have now stepped over a boundary and the next um, obstacle that we might come to will step us further um, and increase our abilities further and take us to new places. And so many people live life in fear of grabbing those things and taking those things and making them happen. And if you're one of those people, I want to encourage you to take baby steps to continue to walk out of those comfort zones because there is such amazing things on the other side of, of those situations. Um, 
I wouldn't be near who I am today if I wasn't bold enough to step out of my comfort zone. And um, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. So how many of you are afraid to step out of your comfort zone or to embrace things? Um, you know, sometimes in life we, we wait on our finances. We wait on perfect scenarios. We, you know, like being in retirement age to finally enjoy life and then being too tired to do the things or uh, physically unable to do those things. We are not allowing God to do his part when we have fear. Fear is the enemy. And have you ever considered that when you are prompted to do something, that once you step, God will meet you? That God will meet you on the other side and provide the funding you need or provide whatever it is you need to keep going? That is where we limit God's abilities because when we aren't willing to step out of our comfort zone, we are keeping God from blessing us with the rest of it. Because if you are inspired to do things and you are com constantly being prompted, there's purpose in that. There's purpose in everything. Miss Shelley says, my story about life is you can choose to be a pond or a river. Amen, yes. A river is moving water that usually starts as a trickle, but as you gain knowledge and strength, it flows more and more, changing the landscape around it and flows out to the ocean. A pond has very little flow, and they usually fill with leaves and sediment and disappear, not leaving any imprint on the landscape. You can use this with the gaining more faith in the Lord and with this growth you will finally join the Lord in heaven which is in the ocean that is just so cool Shelly and that's exactly exactly it a pond is stagnant a river is flowing and that is completely it and I saw Millie say me and Millie oop, I don't know I just touched the screen and it did something weird um, that is okay we are all designed to have um, different personalities, different, I don't know, it got really dark and I don't know if that's, there we go, that's what happened. I touched the screen and the focus went off. Um, good morning, Sanford and Nikki. Um, we all have very different makeups and God has made us that way for a reason. There is purpose in our design and I have always been a little wild and crazy and a little bold as far as um, choosing to step out of my comfort zone. Um, it wasn't always easy. Now it's, it's quite easy for me. Um, I've seen the benefits of stepping out of my comfort zone and um, pretty much I live, I guess it would be fair to say that I live on the edge and don't really have a comfort zone anymore because I'm constantly just stepping out of it. Um, it takes practice to get there. It wasn't always something that I did very incredibly freely. Um, but we have purpose and maybe my purpose is because I am that bold, I can encourage people that aren't as bold to grab my shirt tails and let's go because I like adventure. I like the fun of it. I like what God has to offer. I, when we get out into our adventures, it's just amazing to see God enveloping us and um, loving on us and gifting us. And just, it's just, oh gosh, these, this, these 10 years here have just been incredible. The things that we've done and the things that we do and the things that we desire to do yet, I can't, I just can't wait. Shelly says, Tammy Trayer, you are the roaring river. You are working on changing the, the landscape around you. Yes, and you know, um, we have a smart TV that was the Mountain Boys for his games. And we don't have TV. We use, like I'll feed my iPad to it. Well, when I turn it on, photos start to display on the screen, care of Google. And 
There have been some really interesting photos shared on there that have just been intriguing. There is a scene where it is just like a cavern, uh, just w walls on either side and water. And the water is just crystal clear. The bottom is sand. And it's just an inviting place. Another one is looks like something in you, you would find in Utah with all the rock formations and things, but there's water flowing again through another cavern and you can see just the wear of the water. And it is so intriguing to me to see how nature works and how God has designed things and seeing the beauty everywhere. And it's like, I don't want to leave a stone unturned. And I, I started saying to the mountain man, because those same photos show up on my laptop when I open up my screen. The, you know, they keep changing the photos. And I said, that's how I travel. That's how, although I can't afford to travel and see the world, and that's not necessarily something I want to do. I don't want to see everything. There's certain places I wouldn't mind going. But to be able to see those photos and to be able to take them in and to be able to go to a different place. That's the feeling I get when I'm out here and I'm living my dream and I'm seeking that feeling inside of me that is, that is triggering me to embrace something. That is the feeling. So I'm trying to explain that so you guys can maybe relate. Because once you step out of your comfort zone a couple times and you start to feel that feeling and that invigorating feeling of doing something new and fresh and wild and crazy, you start to seek it and you want it more. And it's really dangerous because he and I are extreme adventurers, extreme risk takers, and like that rush, like that feeling of doing something, um, uh, you know. And together, it's just a really awesome thing. These last couple months, we've just been so grateful that God blessed us with each other because we fuel each other. We fuel each other's fires. And it's just an amazing, amazing thing. So I know our future is going to be wild and crazy. And thank you, Shelly, for that comment. That's pretty cool. Um, Regard, you know, regardless what we're walking out, you know, you guys have been following me for four years. I'm going to be very transparent today. We were threatened to be sued and evicted from our home. We have three, three feet of snow out here, and now it's raining, so we've got a mucky mess. Um, we've been pushing to sell our house. Um, as a matter of fact, we've just recently dropped our price. We are aggressively trying to sell our home. We can't change our circumstances. Um, the enemy is trying to use people close to us to break us. My thoughts on that are they know not what they do. I will not be broken, and I will not be broken by people close to me. God has brought us through these four years with purpose. There is purpose in this. Like I said, I could be wallowing in my own pity. I could be sitting in a corner crying. I don't want to look back on these four years and see that. I wanna see the growth I had, even though it was hard. So that's my transparency today, is that, you know, regardless how hard this has been, I've had to go from being flat on my back to being able to eventually lift a frying pan again, to being able to help do firewood. You know, it's a progressive thing. God takes us through all the journeys in our life with purpose. But would you rather look back and see your growth and see the exciting things you attempted to do? Or would you rather want to be seen rocking in a corner fearful? I challenge you on that. I challenge you on that because things are hard. Life is hard. We go through all kinds of crap crazy, crazy hard stuff. And there's people surfing harder things than I could ever begin to imagine. The loss of children, you know, battling cancer. Um, there's just so many things, loss of loved ones. Um, we have friends who just recently lost everything in a fire. They all got out. That's the blessing. The material things can be replaced. We can't. And we can grow, we can choose to grow and have potential, or we can choose to be stagnant. 
and I want to challenge you guys to be the soaring eagle to see potential in yourself even when no one else does I will see it for you you can contact me I will cheer you on because it is one of the most amazing things to have somebody that I live with here that's willing to cheer me on it's hard when you don't have cheerleaders and I know many of you don't I, I've been there before where I didn't have cheerleaders as a matter of fact I had people foo-fooing every single thing in life I wanted to do but it made me pursue my dreams even more Oop, there we go my internet has been funny because of our weather so I'm thinking that maybe what's happening I it did get a low connection so hopefully you guys are still out there okay some of you are joining back on here I'll wait a few seconds here <coughs> can you hear me now I think our internet flicked a little bit there we last night it was flickering also so uh, I know our our internet tower is actually solar powered also with uh, generator backup so I think that is part of the problem but um, I wanted to say to everybody keep um, Terry in your prayers he um, is moving closer to uh, June his wife and she will be helping care for him as he goes through his cancer treatments and goes through um, rebuilding and strengthening his shoulder from his surgery and um, just keep them in prayer uh, God has been working miracles through our community here through the prayers we've been lifting up so please continue to pray for Terry and June keep Chad in your prayers and keep Diana in your prayers as she um, ventures into her new position and her new job and um, pray for the Chrisingers they are the ones that lost their home and the Gessners lost their 18 year old son to a uh, I believe it was a four-wheeler accident or a snowmobile I believe it was a four-wheeler accident um, so there's lots of devastation and lots of people that need prayer down below is a list of the prayer requests if anybody on here needs prayer please don't hesitate you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com and you can also private message me or leave it in the comments we don't need to know the details we just need to know you need prayer um, God offers us such amazing things and when the multitudes pray um, God works God works when you pray but when there's a community get together of strong people and strong faithful people God is present and there is huge strength in that um, both in comfort and in what he does for us so we have an amazing community I'm very grateful for you all and um, you know I want you guys too to pray for Millie Copper for her success in this series as well as what she has coming ahead um, and and uh, may you see what you are creating it's really awesome it's really really awesome you have fueled my fire greatly to uh, step into fiction and uh, again I encourage you guys to check out her series and um, book four uh, became available yesterday um, you can find her whole series as well as her nonfiction um, pantry books which are absolutely amazing um, and you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper also pray for Shelly so that she gets well and uh, help us pray that uh, God helps us find a buyer for this home and that we can be delivered from here and start making new pathways um, down the river with our future because um, we are really fired up about what God has in store for us and feel very compelled to embrace a bunch of different things so um, that's awesome Mona Mona's reading book for today and I have it set aside as well um, I was afraid to start reading it last night because yesterday was such a long day I was exhausted and I knew if I picked it up that I would not put it down the last time I was reading one of her books I looked at the clock and it was 3 a.m. that is a really good thing for Millie that says a lot about her book but it's not good for my health <laughs> so I got to I got to uh, have um, control <laughs> I don't have good control with Millie's books 
But guys, I, I hope you gained something from this today. I want to share something else with you. I love these verses. I think this really resonates as to what we've created here and what we are doing with our Faithfully Forward. We are putting God first and moving forward this year. We are all dealing with different struggles, different uh, personal struggles, um, different fears. And remember, fear is the enemy. So, you know, try to push through your fears and worries and don't get stuck on them because um, God has good things in store for you. But Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. I am picking you all up if you fall. I am lending a hand. I am sticking my hand out wherever you are. We are strong as a community, but by having cheerleaders and people there that we can go to when we have struggles and ask for prayer when we need them, that's a strong, strong place. And it's a comfortable place. And it's a place that through that place we can find our joy. Trust me, I know that because I have a man in my life that enables me to do that every day. And it's an awesome, awesome gift. So if I can be that for you, I would be thrilled. Um, Ecclesiastes 4.12 says a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Those are some of my favorite verses. And we need to remember that. Terry says, I'm praying for that and not giving up on God selling your beautiful home. Thank you. I appreciate that greatly. I know God is going to do miraculous things, but the thing is often that we need to go through the heart as we wait on his timing. And again, it's a choice to either be stuck in a bad place or to find great joy in that. And that means that we need to seek it. So seek your joy. Mona says, thank you for holding my hand. You're very welcome. It's mutual. And Shelly says, it looks like a good day to curl up on that couch of yours in front of the fire. And I'm going to add to start reading Millie's book. Yes, I agree. I do have some video series that I'm working on that I need to record. But I already had it planned out for my break in the day would be the couch and the book. So I'm, I'm all set. I'm all set. Um, pray for me with the uh, video series I'm recording. I will share with you what one of the things I'm doing. Um, the other I will share later. Um, but I am sharing a video series on breast implant illness. Um, I am doing the soup to nuts from what it is and symptoms to healing from it. The reason I'm doing that is because when I did the retraining of my brain last year, I found great, great results. But as people ask me about my illness or I talk about it to help other people, start getting sick again. So what I am doing is I am creating a series, and this has been on my list anyway to do to help others, but I'm also finding that in doing this series I'm going to help myself. So what I am intending to do is record and edit this series because editing it will be also hearing it. I need to get it out of the way. So I'm going to record it and edit it and put it out there so that I can help people with both silicone poisoning of any kind and uh, even mold um, toxicity as well as breast implant illness but then when people ask me questions I can send them to specific videos and I don't need to talk about it anymore and it will be referred to as it from now on because once I am done with this series I'm going to be retraining my brain again so that I can be healthy um, I don't want to uh, be in this circle of sickness that um, I am actually creating myself because of just uh, talking about it so that is what I am doing. So pray for me that I can get it accomplished and edited and taken care of and do my brain retraining and be good to go again. But guys, I'm going to say a prayer here so that you guys can get on with your day. I hope you gain something from today. You have potential. You have a lot of potential. And on the other side of your comfort zone is some amazing, amazing things that are going to happen in your life. So step out. And be strong and courageous and know that you have potential. So I'm going to say our prayer. Papa, just thank you for the blessing of this day. Thank you for your love and grace and mercy. Thank you for these beautiful people that take time out of their busy days to join me. To both fuel my fire as well as 
just build this community. We have such a strong community and you are so ever present and I'm so thankful for your hand in my life but also in everyone present, even those watching and watching the replays. I ask that you strength, strengthen them and encourage them and remind them constantly of their potential. Continue, don't give up on them, continue to internally share with them the joys and the things that they could be embracing and continue to work hard to be heard over all the noise of the world and just strengthen them for the walk give them the courage to embrace it and hold their hand as they take the first steps and just thank you for placing them in my lives each one of them holds great value so thankful for the people that surround me and I hope that everybody watching is thankful for those in their lives and those that are surrounding them and encouraging them as well. That is such a blessing and you encourage us every day if we're willing to listen and read your word and I just ask that you strengthen all of us to continue seeking you as we move faithfully forward and we put you first. The place for joy and happiness is in seeking you first and reading your word where we are nurtured and blessed and re-strengthened and renewed. So just be with each of us as we um, walk out this next week and give us the courage to do something courageous and wild and out of their comfort zone. And just be with those on our prayer list, heal them and love them and take care of all their needs. And thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. We love you and we ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Oh, thank you, Tammy. I'm, I'm, that's God. Uh, what I am doing is I am walking out my purpose. I feel that. I know that. He encourages me. So I give him all the glory and I'm grateful that through me he is inspiring you. And God bless you too. Good morning, Stephanie. We just finished up, but you can go back on and watch the entire thing. Um, and join me next Wednesday. I will be live. Yes, I will be live next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Standard Time. Thank you guys for encouraging me. Uh, I love you all and I wish you a really good week. And just keep working. Take one step at a time. Every day, make it a point to take a step closer to stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing those things that you find great joy in. Um, the things that find joy, that give you joy in your life should not be things that you're fearful to uh, take part in or that you should put on the back burner. There's a reason we need joy in our lives. As the Bible verse said, it is our fuel and our strength. So seek your joy. I love you all. Have a great day and God bless.